जय माँ ओम लिम बगले परमेश्वरी लिम ओम नम आई एम टुडे इन द टेम्पल ऑफ माँ राजराजेश्वरी श्री बगला मुखी दिस इज सिद्ध पीठ दिस आश्रम इज इन मीरा रोड मुंबई एंड दिस वॉज एस्टैब्लिश बाय माई फादर स्वामी दिव्य चेतानंद जी I had made the first video regarding Lalita Sasnam the benefits of chanting Lalita Sasnam in Kamakhya Gauhati Assam and many people liked it and uh, there were many questions on it and based on the questions I I tried to make more videos in one of those comments somebody had told me that because I told that we have chanted crores of names of Lalita somebody had commented that it may not be true but brother I just want to say that here i'm sitting in this ashram in this ashram not just me there have been thousands and thousands of people who have come who have chanted crores and crores of names of divine mother and based on their tapasya based on what they did with their inputs with their hard work this ashram was built under the guidance of swami devi chetanand ji who is my guru my journey in the spiritual path started from a very young age but my guru has been guiding so many people and here whom you see divine mother she is bagla mukhi in the form of bagla mukhi and i'm very even though I, even though i'm speaking right now i'm getting goosebumps because this place is full of vibrations full of vibrations and uh, people here who have come who have chanted for 9 9 days in navratri they sit the whole day the whole night any siddh muhurt they come many many lakshandis were performed in this place lakshandi yagnas were performed in this place not just one crore in navratris they offer archana of 10 crore mantras so in a group setting multi multi crores of japa has been done in this ashram and not just me there are many many people who have done this and who have benefited here this divine mother whom you see she herself has given darshan to many devotees the place here you see there are a lot of stories about these places people have seen it in their dreams people have felt divine mother walking here people have desired so many things they came here and their desires were fulfilled those who were on the spiritual quest everything was fulfilled here so this divine mother whom you see here is not just a murti she is sakshat siddh speaking deity to those who worship her to those who follow her to those who pray to her sincerely she becomes alive she has given them guidance through my guru to my line of gurus here all my line of gurus are here you can see this is paramas nikleshwar ananda this is my father's guru one of the gurus and then there all these things you see here this is divine mother lalita here she is also said many many crores of japa has been done to make this place vibrant to bring that energy of divine mother so when i am speaking here it is the energy that is speaking uh, that is making me speak so every little thing that you see here is not ordinary it is a uh, lot of puja was done here crores and crores of archanas has been done here and from many many years more than more than around 25 years the archanas has been done this place itself was built on so many havans there is a havan kund there where throughout the day the havan goes on for divine mother so very very vibrant place from here all the journey started this is what i want to say you guys uh, all of you who have heard my videos have given me some very good comments also and i really really thank you all of them till whatever i did lalita sasnam for so long i spoke up till verse number 70 and i'm hoping to complete the rest of the series so the second part of the videos will start from shloka number 71 and then i'm trying to explain and complete everything hopefully you will like it if any questions criticism whatever you want to say please write it down always feel free always feel free to contact me through my email id and whatever guidance i can give you i will definitely give you with the blessings from my guru and the line of my gurus i'm always at your service jai ma jai ma bagla mukhi Jai Ma. So we are going to start uh, understanding the shlokas from Lalita Sasram, the verses from 71 to 80 today, and the names would start in Namauli when you read. It will be from starting from 305. 
Let me just read through a few of the verses and then we'll go to the meaning of it. <coughs> Raja Raja Chita Ragni Ramya Raji Valochana Ranjani Ramani Rasya Ranat Kinkani Mekala Rama Rakendu Vadana Rati Rupa Rati Priya Rakshakari Rakshasagani Rama Ramana Lampata Kamya Kamakala Rupa Kadamba Kusuma Priya Kalyani Jagati Kanda Karuna Rasa Sagara Kalavati Kalala Pa Kanta Kadambari Priya Varadava Manena Varuni Madha Vivala Vishwadhika Ved Vedya Vindya Chalani Vasini Vidatri Veda Janani Vishnu Maya Vilasini Chetra Sarupa Chetra Shi Chetra Chetra Gnya Palini Chayavrit Devinir Mukta Chetra Pala Samarchita Vijya Vimla Vandya Vandya Rujana Vatsala Vagvadini Vamakeshi Vahani Mandala Vasini Bhakti Matkalpalatika Pashupasha Vimochini Savirta Shesha Pashanda Sadachara Pravartika Tapatraya Agni Santapta Samala Dana Chandrika Taruni Tapasaradhya Tanu Madhya Tamopaha Chiti Satpada Lakshartha Chidekara Sarupini Swatma Nandala Vibhuta Brahma Dhyananda Santatihi So we are going to start this meanings The first word it will actually start from 3 or 5 in the Namavali. The first one is Raj Rajar Chitai Namaha. And it goes Ragye Namaha, Ramyai Namaha, Raji Valochanai Namaha. Raj Rajar Chitai means she is being worshipped by all the kings, all those who are desirous of wealth, who are kingly in nature. They all worship her. And who is the biggest one? Who is the lord of wealth? It is Kuber. So Kuber also worships Sri Lalita. From where does Kuber get its wealth? I have told you Sri Lalita means Sri means the one who gives prosperity. So Sri Matre Namaha. Sri means prosperity. Lalita is the source of all prosperity. Of all the wealth that you see in the world, it is all coming from Lalita. Of all the wealth which is in the three worlds, she is called Bhuvaneshwari. She is the empress. She is the queen. She is worshipped by all the king of the kings. She is worshipped by Lord Kubera herself. Om Ragye Namaha. Ragye means Rani. She is the supreme Rani. She is the supreme queen. Om Ramya Namaha. Ramya means she is very beautiful. She is very lovely. Raji Valochana Namaha. She has beautiful eyes. Eyes like that of lotus. I have told the importance of the eyes so many times. She has beautiful eyes. Lotus like eyes means Lotus has very cooling property, very soothing property. When you look at the lotus, it is very pleasing to the eyes. They say when you take a lotus petal, if somebody is sick, if somebody is having fever, if you take the lotus petal and you put it in the forehead, that person feels cool and the fever is gone. So, that is how she is. We are being troubled by the material fever, by the worldly fever of desires, right? So, when we look at mother's eyes, her eyes are very soothing, very calming, lotus-like. Another thing is, lotus is an oblong shape. So she also has an oblong shape like this. Her eyes goes all the way from here to here. She, that means she is able to see everybody around her. So Raji Valochanai Nama. Whenever you meditate on the eyes of Divine Mother, meditate like this. You look at her eyes. Her eyes are very soothing, very calming. Whatever restlessness we have, it all goes away when we look at Divine Mother's eyes. Second, have the trust that her eyes are so big that you will not go unnoticed. All your prayers are being noticed by her. So Rajiv Lochanai Namah. This is very very beautiful meditation on her eyes. Om Ranjanya Namaha. She is very delightful. She gives delight to everybody. So you look at her eyes, you feel she is very lovely. She is very delightful. She, is, she has beautiful lotus like eyes. Rasyai Namaha. She is full of Ras. Ras or Ras means the essence. She is the essence of all things. Whatever gives us happiness, she is the essence. Ranat Kinkani Mekhalai Namaha. And she is so beautiful she, on her waist. She is wearing a girdle. Okay, a waistband which has tinkling bells. So these are also dynamic meditations mentioned. Meditation should not be a boring thing. 
sitting and you know just focusing on your breath that is one of the things but here the meditation is very dynamic your mind is engrossed completely all your senses are engrossed completely in the meditation of divine mother your eyes looking at her form your eyes are med- are meditating on her even when, when your eyes are open you're looking at divine mother's beautiful features you're meditating your ears when you imagining oh you look at her waist and there is a girdle around her waist where there is tinkling bells your ears actually will start hearing those tinkling bells right now when i'm saying tinkling bells tinkling bells ching 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 you meditate on that part you will start hearing that rake om ramaay namaha she is rama rama means lakshmi rake indu vadanaay namaha her beautiful face is like the is like the full moon the purnima okay so that's how beautiful she is rati rupaay namaha she is rati rati is the wife of kamdev or cupid so the cupid's better half is half is known as rati so they are saying rati rupaay namaha rati also means being engrossed in something so all of us have some desires lot of desires desires is what pulling us our rati is 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 in those desires means our attachment or our mind is always engrossed in desires so all that engrossment the mind being engrossed is rati and that rati is divine mother herself so why is that form important rati rupai when i meditate on that form my mind is always when we see in the world when we are living our mind is always having rati in external things but mother those external things is also mother only so when i start meditating on that i start even though i am in the world i am doing all the activities in the world but each and everything becomes divine to me so that attachment that en- that mind engrossed in the worldly things now those worldly things become divine to me because my vision becomes pure when i start meditating like this so rati rupai namaha even though my mind is engrossed in lot of things but when i meditate that everything comes from shri lalita everything is shri lalita the same mind becomes very divine rati priya namaha she is dear to one who is rati rati again i said engrossed mind so a mind engrossed in her devotion that is rati priya she loves them so those who are rati those whose mind is rati is engrossed at the lotus feet of divine mother she loves them all rati priya namaha raksha kariye namaha and she protects them all rakshas rasha rakshas gnaya namaha rakshas gnaya namaha namaha means she kills rakshas rakshas means all those negative qualities inside you first of all which are a hindrance in your spiritual path and all those negative things outside your you which are a hindrance in your physical in your uh, spiritual path or even for that matter your material path so remo- she removes all those hindrances so that is rakshas that is asura that is the negative qualities or the negativities she removes them all she protects us all om ramaya namaha she is very beautiful she is rama she is rama means she is very feminine very gentle ramana lampata ay namaha she is ramana lampata she lampata means she is craving and ramana means uh, uh, enjoying sports so she is enjoying her sports or her playfulness with the lord of the lords lord shiva her consort om kamyaay namaha she is the most desirable thing for anyone so our mind is always running behind desires but this is the form when we meditate when i meditate on this form all other desires vanish away because what is the highest desire one should have the highest desire is to be one with my divine mother the highest desire is to serve her lotus feet in every form in every situation that comes in my life to see her everywhere that is the highest desire so kamyai means the one who is the most desirable super most desirable om kamakala rupaya namaha she is kamakala kamakala means the whole world has manifested because of the desire or the union of lord shiva and she herself lord shiva is known as kameshwara and she is known as kameshwari so their sport by which the whole world manifests is called kamakala so she is kamakala this entire world 
is because of her and Lord Shiva's desire. We have come out of their loving sports. That is why this, she is Kamakala. Kadamba Kusuma Priyayanava. She loves Kadamba flowers. Kadamba trees is, uh, it is mentioned many a times in our scriptures. Lord Krishna stands below Kadamba trees. I went to Vrindavan and I have seen Kadamba trees. They have beautiful flowers. Uh, they have beautiful fruits, edible fruits. And Kadamba fruits, uh, it is said that Krishna is to break those little Kadamba fruits and put it as his earrings. So round balls, uh, huge Kadamba trees. So she loves the flowers of Kadamba trees. Om Kalyani Namaha. She is the one who is blessing everybody. Jagati Kandai Namaha. Kanda means root. Jagat means the universe. So she is the root of the universe. Karuna Ras Sagarai Namaha. She is an ocean of compassion. Karuna Ras. So when we meditate on her, I have explained in one of the videos, her eyes are emitting bliss of Karuna, bliss of, uh, waves of compassion. So Karuna Ras Sagara means, Sagar means, have you seen the ocean? How many waves keep coming in the ocean? So when I, when I look at mother's eyes, waves are compassion like the ocean. Like ocean-like waves of compassion come through her eyes. So that is Karuna Ras Sagara Namaha Om Kalavatya Namaha Kala means all the arts. So whatever arts you see, she is the embodiment of all the arts. Kala Lapaye Namaha Alap, Alap means speech. Kala Lapaye Namaha. When she speaks, again this meditation is dynamic. Just imagining mother speaking from her beautiful rosy lips and her teeth shining. In one of the names, her, it is said that her teeth dispels the darkness. She is, Veda, she is the embodiment of Vedas. So, embodiment of all knowledge is from her mouth. So here, Kalavatya Namaha, when she is speaking, she speaks so beautifully that her speech itself is a fine art. Kalavatya Namaha, Kala Alapaya Namaha, Om Kantaya Namaha. She is Kanta, she is coveted, she is the darling of everyone. She is the dearmost of everyone, she is the beloved of everyone. She is our darling mother, she is our beloved mother, she is our dearmost mother. Kadambari Priyaya Namaha. She loves an offering of Kadambari. Varadayanama, she is the one who gives, who bestows all happiness to us. All our desires are fulfilled because of her. Om Varadayanamaha. Varadayanamaha is again who is the giver of all boons. Vamanayanamaha, she is the one who is <coughs> Vamanayana. Her eyes are full of grace. Varudi Madhya Vivalayanamaha, she is intoxicated by Varuni. When they say Varuni, Varuni is a kind of bliss. When we meditate deeply, people who are very strong meditators and who have meditated for long, they know that after some time, you feel very intoxicated. So they will understand the meaning of Varuni. So when you deeply meditate, you feel the bliss in your body, in your head, in, your, uh, in the stage of Samadhi, that is Varuni. So Divine Mother is always in Samadhi. She is always in union with her. Consort Lord Shiva. So she is known as Varuni Madhya Vivalayanama. She is always intoxicated with spiritual bliss. So Varuni means spiritual bliss. Vishwadikaya Namaha. Vishwadikaya Namaha. Who transcends? Who is beyond this universe? Vishwadika. Beyond this universe. Veda Vidya Namaha. She is all the Vedas and she is the one who has to be known through the Vedas. Vindhya Chale Nivasene Namaha. She lives in Vindhya mountains. Vidhatre Namaha. V, Dhatre, V is the universe. So she is the one who has created this universe. And Dhatre Namaha, she is the one who is sustaining this universe. Vidhatre Namaha. Veda Janani Namaha. Veda means knowledge. Veda Janani means she is the birth. She gives birth to Vedas. She is the one who has given birth to all the knowledge. Vishnu Maya Namaha. All this thing is pervaded by Maya. We are all covered by her illusionary energy. And that is known as Vishnu's Maya. That Maya herself is her. She has created this Maya for all of us to be engrossed in different play. Because she wants to enjoy. She wants to see her children playing. She wants to see her ch children enjoying. Okay. So everything we are covered by Maya all over us. And that is Vishnu Maya. And that is Divine Mother herself. 
ओम विलास ही निन्न महा शी इज वेरी प्लेफुल शी क्रिएटेड अस शी क्रिएटेड द एंटायर यूनिवर्स वाई बिकॉज शी इज वेरी प्लेफुल शी वॉन्टेड टू एन्जॉय शी वॉन्टेड टू मल्टीप्लाई शी वॉन्टेड टू क्रिएटेड क्रिएट पीपल लाइक हर सो दैट दे कैन हैव अ जॉय विथ हर टू वी कैन हैव वी हैव अ रिलेशनशिप विथ विथ हर शी इज अवर मदर वी आर हर चिल्ड्रेन वेन वी आर प्लेइंग इन दिस वर्ल्ड शी इज एन्जॉइंग वेन वी आर बिहेविंग राइटली इन दिस वर्ल्ड शी इज एन्जॉइंग इवन इफ यू डोंट बिहेव राइटली इन द वर्ल्ड she tries to correct us and when we go to her and we pour our heart to her she loves it so those loving relationships which we practice with every other worldly relation when we start practicing with her alone she loves it so she is vilasin in nama she created all of us for her own vilas vilas for her own playfulness she creates the universe that is play for her she maintains the universe that is play for her she then uh, annihilates the universe that also is a play for us chetra sarupaya namaha chetra means the body so she is the body of everyone i am in this body this chetra this body is called chetra even though i feel this is my body but actually this body is shilalita herself chetra she namaha she is the ruler of this body chetra chetragnya palanya namaha so one is this body another thing is chetragya so chetragya is the soul inside the body okay chetra chetragnya palini nama means the one who is protecting this body as well as the soul inside this body so protector of our soul and protector of our body is chetra chetragnya palini nama that is divine mother herself om chay vriddhi vinirmuktaya nama she is without any growth or any decay our body is growing every day and our body is going to decay but our soul it doesn't grow it doesn't decay so similarly she is the super soul we are part and parcel of her so she also in the form of that super soul she is beyond growth and beyond decay chay vridhir vinir muktay namaha chetra pal samarchitaye namaha she is worshiped by the chetra pal by the keeper of the body by us we are she gave us this body she gave us our soul and then we are now maintaining our body and we are now maintaining our soul so when we are doing that we are known as the chetra pal pal means servant we are her servants she created us for her play she gave us the body the senses to be utilized for her service so we are maintaining this body we are chetra pal our duty is to maintain our body our mind our senses our consciousness our heart and our soul so that it is fit for her worship getting it samarchitaye namaha chetrapal who is the chetrapal us the living beings are the chetrapal we are maintaining chetrapal means the one who maintains so we are maintaining what are we maintaining we are maintaining our body our senses uh, our heart our consciousness our mind all this we are maintaining why we should maintain it so that it is fit enough to worship who divine mother so th- this is what it means chetrapal samarchitaye namaha she is worshiped by the keeper of this body by us living beings vijayaye namaha she is always victorious vimalaye namaha she is pure pristine vandyaye namaha she is the only one who is adorable vandarujan vandarujan vatsalaye namaha she is full of vatsal vatsal means motherly love and she loves each and every devotee with the same karuna with the same motherly love she is divine mother vagvadinye namaha she is the one who sits on the speech of wise people vagvadinne namaha if she gives us the power to speak if i am speaking something about divine mother as as a human being as a person with limited uh, capabilities with limited vocabularies with limited understanding i can't speak anything from where does this power come as you meditate on lalita sasnam as you meditate on this specially this vag vadine namaha you know it makes you humble you know that this power has come from divine mother so she sits on the tongue of holy people and she is the one 
who is speaking the words of wisdom through them vagvadini namaha vamakeshi namaha she is vamakeshi she has beautiful curly locks of hair vahani mandal vasini namaha she lives in the fire of circle again this fire of circle uh, sorry she lives in a circle of fire uh vahani mandal vasini namaha in my body when i meditate the center of that fire is here in my manipur near the naval area so she lives there om bhakti mat kalpalatikaye namaha she is kalpalatika kalpatru is a tree which gives which fulfills all your desires so you stand below it and you ask anything you will be fulfilled all your desires will be fulfilled so she is the kalpalatika kalpataru we shielding tree and she grants all the prayers of her devotees when you go to the divine mother lalita the best prayer you must say is do as you wish mother whatever you do to me i accept it all even though a situation may seem bad to me but i know mother in that bad things also only goodness is hidden every second every minute you are only working to uplift my soul to uplift me o oh, divine mother do as you wish this is the highest prayer surrendering yourself at divine mother's lotus feet that is the highest prayer prayer but even if you have some desires you can always go and tell it to your mother even though i'm telling you the highest thing is not to ask anything from her that is the highest thing that should be your goal but i do not discourage you from not asking anything go ask everything from mother in the bhagavad gita when we read lord krishna says to arjun there are four kind of devotees who will always approach me lord krishna says and the same applies to lalita also lord krishna says that four types of devotees will approach me first arth arth means who are in distress who are in trouble you are you are in deep down in some trouble it's bothering you where will you go and ask you are an arth you go and ask to divine mother and she will take care of you she will remove your distress she will remove your grief all your anxieties all your sorrow she will remove it then lord krishna says arthaarthi arthaarthi means who is desirous of some material gains you know you may have some material desire god i will do this then give me this that also is good krishna says those devotees also will approach me whatever material desires you have feel free to go and ask divine mother she will fulfill it for sure then there is another one jigyasu so this is a third category and this is a little above the the rest of the two why because when you are in distress you went to mother she removed your distress when you are desirous of something you went to mother she fulfilled your desires and when these things keep repeating in your life you understand oh wow what is that great power who is fulfilling everything of mine who is taking me so easily from all situations you become a jigyasu you become curious you want to ask more questions you want to know how can i actually be in contact with that divine mother all the time how can i you start meeting gurus you start meeting saintly people you start going to satsangs you become curious you start practicing sadhana to meet divine mother to be in constant union with her to understand her to feel her presence you become jigyasu okay so that is the third category and the last category is gyani gyani means it is even more higher the gyani knows that gyani becomes uh, gyani is the knower of all knowledge you know gyani becomes very pacified very sat- satisfied he knows as long as i'm going to live everything will be, will be provided to me wherever whatever whenever however i need who is a provider my rakshakari divine mother who is a protector she who is vidhatri the the sustainer of the universe she is going to sustain my life that is the level of gyani when you start meditating on these names in alta sasna each and every name when you take i have told you many times take one name for one week meditate on that name it's so like i said vidhatri oh the sustainer of the universe the one who is sustaining the whole universe everything is going in perfect order will she not sustain my life she will will she not sustain my family she will 
the one who is providing food to each and every even the smallest of the ants to us human beings will she not take care of me in every situation yes she will so gyani's understanding becomes clear he knows everything he knows i have come to this world because divine mother wanted to play i should be a perfect player i should entertain her perfectly as much as she wants entertainment from me i she has given me a role i must do that role perfectly she has given me my family and she herself has become my family i must serve to the best of my uh, whatever best i can serve give give it to my family she has sent me friends she, it is she who herself has become my friends i must serve my friends she every person every situation that has come in my life it is divine mother herself she has manifested herself in so many forms in so many situations situations in so many places i am ready always to only serve and only serve her why because she created me for her pleasure and she has given me so much pleasure so in return what should i do more for her how should i connect to her how should i feel her presence so gyani's mind is always connected to divine mother always engrossed at the lotus feet of divine mother like a bee like a honey bee always sucking the nectar from the flower a divine uh, gyani's mind is always engrossed like a honey bee at the lotus feet of divine mother so all these four type of devotee approach god arjun in bhagavad gita asks god okay that's fine but who is the one who you like the most lord krishna says listen arjun everybody is mine i like all the four of them because they have not approached anybody they have approached me so i like all the four of them but yes i love the gyani the most and i want all my children all my creation to go to that level of gyani from arth to artharthi to jignyasu to gyani from the distressed to the desirous of uh, material uh, benefits to the one who is curious to the state of all knowing i want everybody to reach to become a gyani okay so here it is what bhakti mat kalpalitika namaha she is the one who fulfills all the desires of her devotees pashu pashvi mochinye namaha she is the one who removes all the bond of ignorance sanita shesh pashanda namaha she is the one who removes who takes away all those people who are averse to spiritual values sadachar pravartika namaha she is the one who allows the right conduct to prevail tapatray agni santapta samaladan chandrika namaha she is the one who is removing the three types of tapa in the gita when you read this three types of tapa are mentioned it's known as tapatray adi daivik adi bhautik adhyatmik everyone is suffering through this tap one is related to this physical body one is related to our mental tap mental suffering so the physical sufferings of the physical body the sufferings of the mental body and the sufferings caused by supernatural causes so these three kind of miseries are are everybody is bothered by that divine mother shines like a moon so moon is very soothing moon has very cooling rays so her rays are shining so those who are those who approach the divine feet of divine mother they get this soothing rays this moon like rays and because of this moon like rays all her all their distress because of the physical body or the mental suffering or the supernatural causes are annihilated are removed om tarune namaha she is ever young tapasaradhe namaha she is the one who is being worshiped by all the ascetics and then <coughs> which chaitra swarupa this is done we did bhakti mat kalpalitika namaha tapasaradhe namaha tanu madhyaya namaha she is the one who is having a very slender waist tamo pahaya namaha she removes all the ignorance tamo pahaya namaha and then chitis pad lakshartha namaha she prevails in the form of chetana in the form of consciousness everywhere tad pad lakshartha namaha tad pad means uh, in the there are a lot of ved vakya uh, ved vakya uh, statements in the vedas uh, tatvam asi okay om tat sat 
तो तत्व मसी मीन्स दाउ आर दैट और ओम तत् सत मीन्स द हाइएस्ट ट्रूथ इज दैट सो दैट तत् वर्ड इज यूज इन द वेदास टू डिने टू डिनोट समथिंग हायर विच इज कॉन्स्टेंट समथिंग लाइक कॉन्शियसनेस समथिंग लाइक ब्रह्म बट हियर इट इज सेट दैट वॉट एवर इज दैट पीपल आर नॉट एबल टू डिफाइन दैट तत् इज ओनली डिवाइन मदर तत् पद लक्षार्थे नम चिदे कर सुरूपिणी शी इज एवरीवेर परवेडिंग लाइक वन थिंग लाइक द कॉन्शियसनेस स्वात्मानंद लीभूत ब्रह्मादयानंद सतति ही शी इज द वन Brahma is always in Anand. Brahma is always blissful. But that Brahma's one fraction, the fraction of his bliss, is coming from Divine Mother. Swatmanand means we also can experience that Swatmanand. When we are in deep states of meditation, we enter a state of bliss. That bliss is nothing but Divine Mother. That bliss is also like what Brahma is experiencing in his abode. So. the bliss which we experience or the bliss with which brahma is experiencing everything is divine mother herself with this i end the 80th shlok we will continue further if you have any questions anything please feel free to write me i will try my best to answer all of you jai ma